Okay. I'm going to have everybody find a seat. I'm about to do one of my most favorite things ever. This is one of my favorite days. This is one of my favorite moments that I get to say this. Welcome back. Yes. Yes, I'm so excited. I'm glad to see all of you here. We have some new people this year. Of course, I, you know, I love new people, but I love seeing the people that I know walk back through the door. It's awesome. It's awesome. My name is Kim Miller. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the ministry leader here for Thursday morning. That means um, really nothing, except that um, I, I get asked all the questions, and that's fine. I love doing that. I, I am here to make sure that your time in Bible study is the best that it can possibly be. Um, I want to introduce Carrie Carter. Come on up here. Yeah, y'all be really nice to her. She's my new boss. <laughs> the pay is so good. <laughs> Not today. Um, Carrie has moved into Amy's position here at Fellowship West. And Amy has shifted to over all of the campuses so I mean okay I've had it rough as far as people that I work for it was Catherine Mack then Amy Scrivanis and now Carrie so um poor me right because those are three of the best ever and so I just want you all to, to see her and to know her um we're excited to have you thanks we're excited thanks. to have you so thank you yay all right all right here. Thank you, ma'am. All right, before we do anything else, I want to just pray for our morning and take a deep breath because we're excited. We've been um, fighting traffic to get here. We had the um, difficult task of deciding which donut we were going to put on our plate or which two donuts we were going to put on our plate. Billy told me that this one is lunch and this one is breakfast. And I was like... Yes, she's my kind of girl. Let's bow our heads. Oh, most gracious Heavenly Father, we are so, so excited to be here together as your people, together in your presence. Lord, we lift um, this morning and this entire semester up to you. And we pray, Lord, that when we are finished and we close the book on, on this workbook, that we will have your fingerprints all over us. Open our hearts, Lord, and fill it with your love, with knowledge of who you are, and a great understanding of how much you love us. We're excited, Lord. We're excited to start this journey. May we not take one step without your leading. I pray that you will bless each one of these women, their families, their friends, the work of their hands, that it may all be to the glory of your name. It's in Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get some housekeeping out of the way before we start talking about Ezekiel. And we have a, a, an announcement to make about an event that is going to be taking place here on October 5th. Um, we are going to be packing meals as an emergency response to the needs um, in U the Ukraine. Um, there will be two shifts, one from four to six and one from seven to nine. And you need to register for one of those shifts because I don't know how many of you have been to the, an event like this before. They have an assignment for the table so that you can stand at the table and fill, and they play music and you sing and you dance. And if you don't ever work out, you'll be sore the next day from, from standing there and doing that, but it's so much fun. You can register at fellowshipar.com slash mobile pack. So I just want to make that, um, lay that out there for you because it really is a great time and it's a great cause for us to come and do that together. 
The second thing, you should have picked up one of these on your way in. This is your schedule for the semester. Now, it's prettier than it normally is. I, I know, it's, it really is very pretty. Emily Schaefer, who is the AA for Fellowship Women, uh, designed this for us because I have the dreaded black screen on my computer. So I, I sent it to her and she did this and she sent it back to me. She goes, will this be okay? I got your workbook and I looked at it and I tried to match the colors and I went, well, I guess it'll be all right because normally I give them a white sheet of paper with black ink on it, all in caps so I don't have to switch back and forth from lower and uppercase. So it's gorgeous, but please don't get used to this because I probably won't do this next semester. Um, I, I want you to take notice of October 20th. We will not meet October 20th in here. We, we won't meet at all that week because it is the Grand Parenting Summit here at Fellowship Bible Church. I encourage you to sign up for that and spend some time with that ministry. It, it, is, it really is an awesome time to be together. But that means that our group will not meet that week. We will return on the 27th and pick right up where we left off. And we have arranged for us to be finished the Thursday before Thanksgiving. Because I know that coming back after Thanksgiving is more difficult than we can even put into words. On the back of that sheet, we have revival prayers. And you're going to hear more about this in your small group. But just let me tell you, prayer is a very important element when it comes to revival. And each week, we're asking you to pray for the first week. Every time you get your book out, you'll be praying for personal revival. And in your workbooks, if you will turn to the opening of week one, you'll see that you've got a whole bunch of blank space. And as the week goes on, I want you to just put, and please don't, somebody looked at mine and they went, oh my gosh, and I went, yeah, don't panic I'm very wordy, which you all are about to find out that I'm very wordy. And um, so I just wrote all week long. I kept adding to this prayer for personal revival. And the second week, we're going to be praying for revival in marriages. Um, now, some of you have never been married. You may be divorced or like me, you may be a widow. But marriage is under attack not just in Little Rock or Arkansas or the United States. Worldwide, marriage is under attack. And I, I just can't even imagine how hard it is if we don't get on our knees and ask God to revive marriage throughout the world. And then for our children, same thing. You may not have children. Your children may be grown but we want to pray revival over our children throughout our families, those extended family members, our friendships, that they would be godly friendships over our homes and schools and workplaces. We are 70 plus women in this room. And if we storm the gates of heaven and get before his throne, what a mighty sound that would be. What a sweet sound that would be in our Father's ear. Um, then we're going to pray for the church. That's the big C church. And then over our nation and this world. So I just want to make sure you hold on to this so that you know what our schedule looks like. And by the way, next week where it says week one, that means when you come in, that's the week that we're going to be covering in small group. So today you did not have a lesson because it's the introduction. And I am excited to get on with that. We're getting ready to embark on a journey through the book of Ezekiel. I know. Did anybody go, we're doing an eight-week study on Ezekiel, really? Have you read Ezekiel? It's a lot. I'm just going to tell you right now, it's a lot. Our author, Erica Wiggenhorn, 
spent over 10 years off and on studying the book of Ezekiel before she wrote this study. So this is a lot to cover in eight weeks. But right now, I want all the perfectionists in the room to set that down. I want us to take a deep breath because here's what I want us all to remember. God hasn't told us everything, but he's told us everything we need to know. And when we get done with this eight weeks, this small bite out of Ezekiel, we will know everything that God intends for us to know at this time. Ezekiel isn't going anywhere. It's not going to come out of your Bible after we finish studying it. But we don't have to know every single detail in eight weeks. I do want to give you a little overview of the book of Ezekiel so that you know where we're going. The author is believed to be Ezekiel. He was a contemporary of Jeremiah and Daniel. The date it was written was likely between 593 and 565 BC during the Babylonian captivity of the Jews. And this was one small community of Jews that were living in captivity. The story starts five years into captivity. Five years of living in despair. Ezekiel has a majestic vision of Yahweh's glory. And he is given, God imparts to him, his message for his people who are living in captivity. The book can be divided into four sections. And I'd like to tell you that this is going to be encouraging, but this is going to be hard to hear. The first 24 chapters is the prophecy of the destruction and the ruin of J Jerusalem. Chapters 25 through 32 is the prophecy of the judgment on the na nations surrounding them. Chapter 33 is a last call for repentance for Israel. And then take a deep breath. <clears throat> Chapters 34 through 48 is the prophecy concerning the future restoration of Israel. We're going to get a really good taste of Ezekiel, but we're not getting three meals, and it's okay. With God's word, I've discovered it never really is a full meal because every time I go back <clears throat> to something that I've studied, something that I thought I knew all about, God puts new things in there that open my eyes and open my heart, and I'm thrilled to see it because this is a living word. It's how God speaks to his people. And so if, you, if we don't get something this time, the next time we get into Ezekiel, he'll feed us something different, something new. The journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. We've probably heard that old proverb before. And this eight-week study is our first step into Ezekiel. That being said, I just want to tell you there are three things, and this will help us. There are three things that God has laid on my heart for us to really hone in on. And there are three things that I saw over and over and over again through the book of Ezekiel. I believe if we can get a solid footing on these three things, that we will experience growth in our faith and we will experience revival. So let's look at those three things today and start charting our course. The first is this, that we will know, believe, and trust that he is sovereign God.
from the beginning, the Israelites as a people were introduced, experienced, and identified as the people of God, Yahweh, the God, the sovereign God. His characteristics, his identity marked them not the other way around. Genesis 17.1 says this, when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless that I may make my covenant between me and you and may multiply you greatly. From the beginning, when he pulled a people out to be his people, he said, I am God Almighty. In the desert, after escaping from Egypt, he hands them the ten, hands Moses the Ten Commandments. Exodus 20, verses 1 through 3. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. And then as they entered the promised land, Joshua 4, 21 through 24, and he said to the people of Israel, when your children ask their fathers in times to come, what do these stones mean? Then you, shall let it, then you shall let your children know, Israel passed over this Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried the ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan for you, just as he did to the Red Sea, which he dried up for us until we passed over, so that all the people of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty that you may fear the Lord your God forever. And I want to pause right there because it is that you may know the fear of the Lord your God forever. And I just want to say we're about to read that they forgot to fear the Lord their God forever. So much like we do. Why is that important going into Ezekiel? To know, to believe, and to trust that he is the sovereign God. Well, I'm going to tell you why that's important. 72 times between chapters 5 and 39, God says, do this so you will know that I am the Lord. Do this so they will know that I am the sovereign Lord. Do this so they will know I am God Almighty. 72 times that is repeated between, between chapters 5 and 39. It's important. It's important that we get that, that we understand that. May we know it at the end of the eight weeks. But we can't just stop there because we know that head knowledge fades for us. Anyone who has ever walked around their house with their keys in their hand and their glasses on their head going, where are my keys and my glasses? You know head knowledge fades. Because at some point in that morning, you put your keys in your hand and your glasses on your head and you have forgotten it. When we add believing to the knowing, we start that journey from the head to the heart. And if we don't stop there, we cement that knowledge in our heart in such a great way that we trust. If we add trust to that knowing and that believing, and then we start trusting God, we trust that he is sovereign. We trust that he is powerful. We trust that he is in control. And we take our hands off of things that we are trying to control, that we want to be our way instead of his way because 
his way doesn't feel so good in that moment. We can trust him with the diagnosis at the doctor's office. We can trust him with the trouble in our marriage that we're facing. We can trust him with the pink slip that we got at work. We can trust him with that bill that just came through that we don't know how we're going to pay. We can trust him with our child who has gone off the path. We step into that and we trust. You know, I have people all the time say, I don't know what to do for God. And I went, you know what God wants from you? He wants you to know him. He wants you to believe him. He wants you to trust him. That's what we do. The second thing that God just kept bringing up over and over and over again, and boy, this one really stomped on my toes, that we will know and believe there are real consequences for disobedience. There are real consequences for disobedience. And that obedience is a God-designed blessing. My prayer is that when we close this workbook, we will have a deep appreciation for and a deep longing for obedience. It gets a bad rap. Usually when we say obedience, everybody goes, it's that cringe word. For some reason, it's a cringe word. It's, it is a blessing to be obedient. Obedience expresses and proves our love for God. Listen to what Jesus said in John 14, 15. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And in verse 21, he says, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Do you hear that? Do you hear the blessing that comes in that Jesus is promising, if you love me and keep, you keep my commands, and if you keep my commands and show that you love me, the Father is going to love you. There's a blessing. I am going to love you. There's a blessing. And I'm going to manifest myself. Do we need any more blessing than that? It's a blessing. In Leviticus... God even commands his people to obey his commands. There you go. Leviticus 22, 31 says, You must faithfully keep all my commands by putting them into practice, for I am the Lord. Obedience is a blessing. I'm just going to throw some, some verses and bless, other blessings out. It brings joy. Psalm 19, 8. And Psalm 112, 1. It leads to freedom and life. Psalm 119, verses 45 and 93. It is fellowship with God. 1 John 3, 24. It is wisdom. Proverbs 10, 8. There are real consequences for disobedience. We will see that throughout Ezekiel. And I don't know how many of you ever sat under Ruthie George's teaching, but she used to say, God says what he means, and he means what he says. And we are going to see that. That is going to come to life so much as we walk through these first, especially these first 24 chapters of Ezekiel. You're going to see that disobedience has consequences. God is going to say what he means and he's going to say to them, and I mean it. I mean it. But we need to remember as we read through these first 24 chapters and then the next that follow the destruction of the nations around them, that this is God's discipline. This isn't man's discipline. This is God's discipline. And I love how Chuck Swindle put it. 
He says, this is the big idea. He's talking about Ezekiel. God didn't exile the Israelites to punish them. He never has been, nor is he now, interested in punishment for punishment's sake. Rather, he intended the punishment, the judgment, in Ezekiel's day as a means to an end. To bring his people to a state of repentance and humility before the one true God. Last year, we studied Hebrews in this class. Many of you were here for that. But we hit that 12th chapter, verses 1 through 12. Um, there's, I, I just, I'm going to give you a summary because I, I don't want to read all of that here this morning because we, we want to get to our small groups. I know that. But listen, here's the summary. Here's what we are not to do. We are not to make light of the Lord's discipline. We are not to give up when the Lord disciplines us, when he corrects us. We need to remember that he disciplines those he loves. He disciplines those he accepts as his child. I love verse 11 because it's so true. No discipline is enjoyable while it's happening. It's painful. But afterward, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in his ways. And verse 12 says this, and really this is what we are going to say to one another. We're going to get brave and we're going to get, we're going to get real here. So take a new grip with your tired hands and strengthen your weak knees. We're going to grab hold of obedience. We're going to be on our knees asking forgiveness for our disobedience. Accepting his correction, knowing that it's coming from a place of love that we can't even comprehend. It really is time. It is past time to shift to a more mature attitude about obedience in the church. The third thing that God has laid on my heart that I see over and over and over again as we, we go through Ezekiel is that we will know, believe, and trust that the Lord is with us. Week four of our study, um, our author asks a question. Now, um, I, I, I waited until now to tell you that I spent the first part, the last part of the spring and the first part of the summer walking through the first five weeks of this study with the author. Um, I was part of a team of about 50, 50, 55 leaders across the United States who were on her, what she called, launch team. So the book had not been released yet. She sent us a digital copy, and every week we had a Zoom with the author and walked through the first five weeks. It was incredible. And to get to know her and hear her a little bit and know her heart and know her love for God's word and her love for the people of God, especially women, was um, quite the treat for me. But she asked a question in week four that steamrolled me to the point that I put it on an index card. And for those of you who've been here for a while and know me, I have a little bit of an index card problem. Um, I like them a lot and I write things on them and put them up around my house. I wrote this question and I put it on an index card, an orange one, so that I wouldn't miss it. And I put it on my refrigerator with a magnet right where every time I open the refrigerator, I'm seeing it. And this is the question. How consistently do you live in awareness of the Father's presence? I want to say that again. How consistently 
Do you live in awareness of the Father's presence? They're sitting in exile, the Israelites. They have been dragged from Jerusalem to Babylon. And for five years, they have been sitting there in despair. We may not quite understand that they felt like God was not there because for them, God's dwelling place was in their temple in Jerusalem. And that's where they thought God was as they are sitting in despair in a pagan nation in captivity. So just let's put ourselves in that mindset for a minute. We are going to hear over and over and over again that they felt like they were alone. Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. I'm going to read it from the screen. But now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned up, and the flame shall not consume you. This morning, I don't doubt that there's somebody sitting out here who is feeling like God is far away. And so, I want you to just indulge me for a minute. As you're sitting there, I want all of us to read this out loud together. I want you to read it out loud in this room, surrounded by these saints who love God and who love Jesus. And listen, I have felt that way. I have felt like God was far away. But it takes other people coming around me and reminding me he is right there. And so this morning, would you just read this out loud with me all together? But now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. And the flame shall not consume you. Thank you. It's so easy to forget, especially when we are overwhelmed by the circumstances that are surrounding us or the circumstances that are surrounding somebody we love. His presence. His people will learn so much about his presence, and we'll get to watch that throughout the book of Ezekiel. His presence is a refuge, Psalm 78, 28, and 24, 1, 4. It's a resting place. His presence is a resting place, Exodus 33, 4. His presence brings joy, Psalm 16, 11. He doesn't ask us to do anything, believe anything, without being present with us. And I want you to hear what Jesus said to us. I love this. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you and be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. 
Do you hear it? Did you hear that? He's been given all authority. All authority. He's telling them, we are to teach people to obey his commands. And he is with us. Till the end of the age, he is with us. So let's just review that. This semester, we're really going to hone in on the fact that we are to know, believe, and trust that he is sovereign God. That we will know and believe there are real consequences to disobedience and to trust that obedience is a God-designed blessing. And to know, believe, and trust that he is present with us. As the rest of the team starts making their way up here, I just want to say one, a, a couple things about studying the word this semester. Um, we're going to see ourselves. We're going to see our nation. We're going to make some parallels as we go through this study. Um, but I, I want us to be careful of doing, of, of when we do that, okay? Because here's the thing. Kerry New, Newwolf, um, he is a pastor, a author, and a podcaster from Canada. Um, I did a little Bible study with him uh, that he wrote. And it said, he said this, when it comes to your faith, the value is in the application the value is not in learning about it. It's learning how to do it. It's the journey. And when we have uh, when we have to consider, we have to consider the whole story of the Bible. We have to understand that the verses and the chapters that we are reading in Ezekiel are part of a whole story. And as we study God's word, we need to keep this in mind. Number one, the great love of our God. The ongoing theme of man's redemption, which is from Genesis to Revelation. And our incredible need for a savior. We need to keep those three things at the forefront of our, our minds as we are studying the book of Ezekiel. Now, these are two of my favorite people sitting behind me right here. And um, we're going to, could y'all pull up? We, we need, yeah. We, we were told that if we don't pull up, if we don't pull up, we'll, we'll be in the um, dark. Okay. This is um, the teaching team. And I, I wanted them to come up so that, number one, you could see them. And number two, that they can share what they've been praying for you um, this summer and before we get started. I think it's really important that you know that we've met. And it's just, I love the way God puts our hearts together. I mean, like, he just, like, mushes us together. It's really fun. But we each, we each have different takes on things and different, I mean, like, he reveals different things to us. And he has designed us passionately differently, but so united, it's like scary. <laughs> like we finish each other's sentences when we're having lunch, we're all three talking at the same time. I don't know how we do it, but we do. It, it's a gift. <laughs> so um, this is Lee Angel Woodham. And Lee Angel, I'm going to just let you start us off. Okay, I'm on. Okay, make it sure. Um, I'm Lee Angel Woodham. I've been teaching for I don't even know, seven, eight years now. Mm -hmm. So um, every fall I step up to teach and it feels like the first time again, like, can I do this? Um, and God reminds me, you didn't do it yeah. last mm -hmm. year or the year before or the year before. He says, I did it. And so by the time I come in here and get ready and get started, I just get that excitement again because it is him. And when I show up in this room with you guys and see your faces and some of you back, that haven't been here because of COVID. I mean, it's just an excitement 
It's like we weathered a storm and now we are back to hear from our God and he's ready to talk to us. And so I'm super excited about it. Um, I kind of get a feeling just from being out in community that people are glad to be back together. I see a kindness in people checking me out and people I wait in line with. Mm -hmm. Um, People are ready to hear hopeful things again. And even though Ezekiel looks like a book um, of judgment, it's all about God saying, here's who I am. And I am consistent and I am trustworthy and there is hope in me. And that's what the world needs now. The same thing they needed with repentance, but also restoration. That's what the world needs now. And we are that voice. And I'm just excited that we kind of have some distractions out of our way finally, where we can get back on track. And I know your hearts and I know you're ready for that too. So that's my prayer, just that we kind of launch again into hope. It's revival. Yeah, I like that. All right, so this is Carissa Hartage, and I love her. I love God, her you love me. I love you too. Um, hi, ladies. It's so good to see your faces. Um, I was kind of concerned um, that I wasn't going to be able to be here this semester to teach. I've been teaching on this team for about five years now, which blows my mind. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm really grateful that at the end of the semester, last semester, Lee Angel and Kim came and they said, yeah, no, you're not. You're coming back. Like, you have to. You don't have a choice. And I'm glad that they did because all summer long, God has been reminding me that my calling belongs to him. I don't know if you all have been hearing his um, the messages on Sunday morning, but I think probably about three times I've heard that our calling is not ours, it's God's. And so he's crafting time and wisdom and the Holy Spirit through his power is leading this team and guiding us. And I'm really excited to get to continue. I'm happy to be here and see your faces. Um, I was just jotting down as Kim was speaking, I was overwhelmed by uh, the Holy Spirit just sharing with my heart that I grew up in a um, mixed religious denominational background. My dad was a Southern Baptist preacher, but my grandfather was a charismatic uh, movement pastor. And so I went to a lot of revivals growing up. Did you all do revivals? Have you been to any revivals, tent revivals that can last anywhere Anybody? between three and seven days? Right, yeah. <laughs> also revivals. known as gospel meetings for some uh, of you. Amen, <laughs> amen, right? And so I know that there is um, three things that were involved with those experiences. Number one, there was brokenness. And even as a child, I would see brokenness among the grown-ups and weeping and tears. And yet every time there was also intense joy and relief Mm -hmm. and freedom right after. So every revival, there would be tears and there would be brokenness. But there would also always be celebration and joy. And I also know, and this is what my prayer is for us, that every time this experience happened, there would be attack. And the thing with revival is that if there's anything our enemy hates more than anything, it's for the people of God to get rejuvenated and renewed and re-inspired to do his work. And so I just want to encourage you, if you feel during the course of this study overwhelmed, or if you feel intimidated, or if you feel shame, or if you feel fear, or if you feel like you're looking at the person next to you and then comparing your experiences or your sin or your past or your um, knowledge about the word or any of those things with the person sitting next to you, please know that is an attack from your enemy and it is not from the Lord and call it out for what it is and put it away. Do not let it enter into your group. Do not let let it enter into your quiet time because there is an opportunity, yes, for brokenness. But my gosh, that's such a blessing to be broken before our Lord who has given us the power of the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ's forgiveness so that we can be broken and then be lifted back up and revived, right? That's what our faith is all about. And so that's my prayer for all of us that we continually remind each other to be on guard, be in prayer, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And stay the course because there is celebrating and there is joy at the end of this process for us. And I love that the book of Ezekiel ends with the restoration, um, the future, um, the promise of restoration. Um, 
and you know, you're right. There is there is attack because I, I told you my my computer. I turned it on to start getting ready, and it was the black screen. And then last week I went into the garage and got into my van, and it would not start. And um, I was like, okay. So when I my next door neighbor, bless his heart, came over and figured out how to get my van out of the garage so that he could put the jumper cables on it and get me started. And I went down to Walmart and got a new battery. And the young man that was waiting on me, he goes, oh, he goes, this is so frustrating. I went, it is, but you know, my computer went out, died last week, and the, it's the van this week. I said, and I start Bible study next week. And he looked at me kind of funny, and I went, this means I'm on the right track because the, the enemy does not want me. He wants me distracted. I said, and guess what? Ha, ha, ha. I'm on to him. I said, so I'll just buy me a new battery and not worry about it. And he started laughing and he went, amen. And I was like, he was about 23 maybe. And I was like, I'm just preaching to him in the, in the mechanics area of Walmart. But yeah, so I, it, it, it happens every year. Things, and, and, and I have just learned that it means our enemy is real and he is going, oh, yeah, I really don't want them to do that. I really don't want them to do that. So I, I'm glad that you brought that up. So thank you. All right. We love you. And we are excited that you're here. And you have um, a little assignment in small group this morning that you're going to do together. I can't wait to hear um, from your leaders what, what you all um, come up together and brainstorm together with. This is a time, too, for you all to reconnect and um, maybe get to know the new people that are here a little bit better. I, please, if you do not have a name tag on, we're going to do this for a couple weeks. I tell people all the time, this is a ministry for me more than anybody <laughs> because there's, it's just a lot of names. And I'm not as young as I used to be, and sometimes I forget things, Right? It's not that you haven't made it from, from the head to the heart, I promise. It's just, <laughs> it's just my lack of ability. So um, anyway, I'm going to can, I'm gonna open up in prayer and let you all join me, if you would. All right. Let's bow our heads, ladies. Oh, dear Lord, we just thank you so much that your word speaks into our lives right where we are. Lord, I just thank you for the truth that you are about to impart to each one of us. And I pray that you will make us brave and courageous, not afraid to step into the changes that you might be asking each one of us to make. That word change terrifies us. The word obedience terrifies us. And Lord, I'm just praying right now that you would take that fear away and that you would show us the blessing that you desire to lay on each one of us. Lord, I pray that you will bless each one of us with your presence, with the knowledge and understanding and wisdom of what to do as you teach us this semester. Lord, I just thank you uh, for being back with us this morning. As I said in leaders' time, um, it's like a homecoming every fall when we get back together um, with family, with sisters, uh, with your daughters. And I just, it's a, it's a neat time and a special time, and I thank you for it. And I pray that you would just unite us in heart as we go into your word. Um, I thank you for the point in my life where somehow you, it crossed from being in your word, being a burden, and a list of rules into um, just a portal to know you, um, to feel your love more deeply, um, to know how to please you, and to know how to be blessed more by you. And I see that in these women, and they've taught me more about it. And I just pray that we would walk into this, um, what will be confusing at times, study um, with visions and things that just seem crazy and um, with heaviness and judgment and destruction, um, it would be easy to focus on the just side of you, God, 
um, but that side only exists because the merc merciful side of you is just as big. Mm -hmm. And I pray that we would remember that all the way through, and that especially in the study, we would seek to know you more, um, to know your heart more, um, to see the big picture. And I, I trust you to lead us in that, and I thank you for that. Father, I just, um, I just thank you so much for the opportunity to gather together and learn about you and learn more about your character and who you are. And I just pray over these ladies that, and even as us teachers, um, that as we navigate Ezekiel, that the Holy Spirit uh, would do the work for us. Mm -hmm. um, we can do this because of the power of the Holy Spirit. You say that we have everything we need in the Spirit in order to understand your words. And, and Holy Spirit, we know you're the connector between our hearts and our minds. You're, you're the, the, the revealer of truths. And Holy Spirit, you pray on our behalf and we don't know what to ask God for. We don't know how to clarify. And so we just invite you into this space and this time and this study, uh, just because you can do this job better than anybody. It's what you were designed to do. So we just thank you for that, Holy Spirit. And I just ask that, there would be protection among these women and among the teaching team as we navigate um, and, and lean into revival, that you would protect our hearts and our minds and that you would allow us to recognize schemes and lies from Satan and also recognize the promptings and the, um, the conviction of the Holy Spirit and the leading and teaching of the Holy Spirit because we know that one is gentle and pure and love and the other wants to isolate us and, and uh, make us feel shame and burdened in a way that is not like, like Jesus' burden is. And it's heavy. And so I just pray against that. Um, Father, I just ask that you would guide their community. Um, let us just relish the time together in community. Restore the lonely hearts, um, any dryness that's in the room, any um, places that are... Um, any, anything that is a hindrance, Father, to the change that you have in store for each one of us, I just pray against it right now in Jesus' name. I ask that you would be the guide, that you would be the author, as you so, so well are, and we just give it over to you fully. And we love these ladies, but we love you too, Lord, and so, so grateful. We're so grateful that we get to be a part of this group. In Jesus' name, we pray all these things. Amen. Amen. Okay.